and welcome to D-Town, episode 113. I'm Larry Becker. He's RC. What's going and on, everybody? I can't wait to see his tip. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to top the show, but we were looking at it just before we went live. <laughs> Sorry for being a couple minutes late, guys, but, uh, but it is such a cool tip. And we've got a great show for you today. Um, back by popular demand, Cheap Shots is actually making an appearance. I recorded a couple of Cheap Shots recently, so we're going to do that today. We've got a cool website for you guys to look at and some really great tips. And we're going to start with one from you, RC, on multiple exposure. All right, so this is the deal. So take a look at this, uh, take a look at this website. This is Phyllis Burchett Photography. Now, what happened was this. I was sitting at a workshop in, uh, I was sitting at a workshop at Bodhi. Right. I was okay. doing some stuff with Bill Fortney, and we were doing a whole bunch of HDR stuff, abandoned towns, and this, that, and the other. And when we were working with all of that, we passed by a stream, and Bill, you know, he was a great photographer, great right. landscape guy, was like, hey, you know what? Why don't you pull out your big stoppers? And like, I've got a 10 stop big stopper sure. from Lee. And we pull out all these big neutral de densities, and they have sing rays that they were using, variable neutral densities. And everybody sat down and they just kind of got themselves all set up to be able to do this long flowing shot. So more often than not, what happens is this. When you use a 10 stop, you're in a really, really bright part of the day, but you want to take pictures of water. So you right. want all of the attributes of the day, but you want to see soft, silky water kind right. of thing. Right. So this is the kind of look that you're generally getting when you work with this, right? So you're looking for that flowing, you know, the, that the flowing, silky water. Yeah, the silky water. And like this is what I did when I treated it, right? So I turned it into something like this. I love that kind of photography. Right. Now, Phyllis is sitting there, and she's like, click, 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 click. And I'm like, what are you doing? Right. She's like, well, I don't have an ND. So what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, but you're taking multiple pictures of water. And this is literally what it looked like. Right? So she's taking pictures, click, click, click. Click, and I'm like, how does that even help you? Right. She said, because I'm not taking multiple pictures. I'm taking a multiple exposure. On these cameras, both Canon and Nikon, and I don't want to get, I'm just going to show you kind of briefly what it looks like on a, on a very cheap overhead. But if you look inside of the shooting menus for these things, they have a section inside of here that's called multiple exposure. And on the multiple exposure area, you set that on, and what you do is you specify how many pictures you want to take. And this is different than bracketing. No, it's very different than bracketing. You're taking the exact same shot over and over and over. Okay. But in this case, what I did, what she did was, she set up a whole bunch of different exposures. So she said, I'm going to shoot nine exposures of the exact same thing, but it's going to be all in one frame. So here, so this was, this was me just setting up the example. I wanted to show what it looked like if I took a picture nine times at the same time. This is what it looked like under multiple exposure. Okay, so it ends up with one exposure out of the camera. Out of the camera. Made up of the multiple exposure, so there's no post-processing to get that. None whatsoever. That is so cool. I was sitting there and I was like, you know what, Phyllis? Not only do you get the hat tip for that, but we also talk about your photography. She's got great photography over here on this website. And I wanted to make sure that I showed her stuff because it was one of those things where you can learn from anybody. Phyllis was the person who actually made it good for me, and I wanted to kind of bring it, you know, to all of you guys sure. from her. So this is her tip. She's learned from somebody else, I'm assuming, but this is the person that enlightened me on this trip, and I was absolutely, I was, I could not wait to show it on, to show it on this. Now, you could do some of this kind of stuff in Photoshop as well. I can show you that a little bit later, but the. The key here is she was able to knock all of that stuff out right inside a camera. Right. It, it, it doesn't even take any thinking. <laughs> you know, you just offload and you've got Dude, the I, exposure. I That's thought awesome. She was, I thought she was great. I thought that was absolutely great. But anyway, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I know that you want to be able to throw, you, you have a cheap shot and you want yep. to talk about the Olympus. Yeah, we'll talk a little about that. I see it there. Yeah. I see it there. So we'll come back. We'll take a look at that and some prizes and a website to watch. Stick around. I really believe that your photography is a reflection of who you are. In my posing class, you're going to learn a lot of things. How to pose a bride and bring out the best in her shape and her curves. You how to photograph a groom, because many of us who may focus on the bride will ignore the groom. And getting your clients to mirror you. Mirroring, I find, is the best way of getting people to pose. I'm Jerry Gionis. Check out my class on the fine art of posing at kelbytraining.com. 
I always love our commercials because they're about <laughs> Kelby training. Great stuff. Um, speaking of great stuff, you know, you guys have been so nice to me in the uh, in the comments, both here and on my blog, Larry'sCheapShots.com, and you've been asking for more cheap shots, and I do them on the blog all the time. I say, go over to the blog, read the blog, read the blog, and, but you guys want them on D-Town, and you want the video version. So we did a few recently, and here's one we recorded that has to do with foam pool noodles and uh, how you might be able to use those in photography. Hey guys, Larry here, and I've got a cheap shot for you. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. This is obviously, this is a pool float, and you can get these anywhere uh, in Florida all year round, but I know in most of the country, you can only get them during the summer. These are great though, for lots of different things. You can use them, cut them up, and use them as padding, extra padding in your bag or something like that. But I'll, I'll show you a trick that I do with uh, something about this size. Just take any sharp knife, and slice it down the length of it right to the middle. Then with that split in it, you can put this on a partially opened car window. So it'll fit right over the window itself. And then you can point your camera out the window and rest your camera actually literally on the glass without touching the glass. And this will absorb some of the vibration and some of the shock. So it's kind of a nice way to be able to be a passenger in a vehicle and then set up a nice shot and have something to lean your camera or your camera lens against without hitting the glass of, of, your, uh, of your car. Now there's another version of this, it's a little bit smaller, and this is a little segment of pipe insulation or tubing insulation. You would put this on uh, conduit and there are a couple versions of this that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. And the version that I like is this same kind of closed cell foam. Because there's another kind that's kind of a rubbery uh, consistency that has a split already in it. The problem with the ones with the split already in it is that they know that you're going to put it onto a pipe. And um, with the split in it, they have some glue in there as well. And I like these that don't have any glue because I can cut the split in it if I want. Now the reason I'm bringing up this one is because there are times that I want to put a little uh, insulation around a tube like a tripod. So I've got this metal tripod. I live in Florida and I don't go to cold weather that much, but when I do, I would like to temporarily insulate my tripod and actually have some kind of wrap around it. But for the most part, I don't need it there. So I'll get something like this, and obviously it comes in big long sections, about eight feet long, for just a buck or two. And I'll slice it down the length, and then I'll hold it there with gaffer's tape. And so now I've got a, a temporary uh, insulation or cushion, uh, but the main reason is for temperature insulation on my tripod. So a couple foam tubes and a couple cool things you can do with them. Hope that helps you on Cheap Shots. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Larry. <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm looking at you do the tutorial and then I'm like, thanks so... Yeah, I'm wearing the same what? thing, yeah. How'd you do? I don't, have a big, I don't have a big budget for wardrobe. I'm wearing the same thing no matter what we film or we, when. We sat there, the producers all come over and they look over at the TV and then they look over at Larry and they're like, dude, you're wearing the exact same... You know what? I, I have the same problem all the time. I have like 14 pairs of blue jeans, yeah. shorts, 14 pairs of shirts. It's the exact same thing. You, I, I usually just pick up the next one and just put it on. I'm like, I don't think about that kind of yeah. stuff. I can't be bothered. But hey, before we actually go, we could be, right. we're gonna go to a break. Tell me a little bit about the Olympus. Oh, You've been okay. shooting it for a bit. So we got, this, uh, we got this Olympus. Now, Olympus is known in, in the mirrorless camera field mm -hmm. for their pen series. Mm -hmm. Well, this is way above the pen series and just a step below or, or beside, I guess, their DSLR series because this is an OMD EM5. And what it does is it's, um, it, it mimics the OM series from back with, when they did SLRs back okay. years ago. And it looks really cool. This actually is the best feeling mirrorless camera I've ever held. So the ergonomics of this are awesome. And the other thing is, in working with mirrorless, being a DSLR shooter, I like an optical viewfinder. 
and EVS, electronic viewfinders, do not make me happy. And if you go over to Larry'sCheapShots.com, you'll see two things there. One is an article this week on EVFs and why I hate them, and also why this is the best EVF I've ever used. And uh, there's just a whole lot of really cool things about this particular one. But also next week, I'm gonna do a follow-up because a lot of people are asking me about mirrorless cameras. Are they really a good solution? Are they a solution for everybody? Who are mirrorless cameras for? Because I've used all the mirrorless cameras that are on the market right now, I've had them in my hands. And this is just the latest one. It's kind of expensive. With the lens and everything, it's like 1300 bucks for this camera. So it's not like a cost savings over a comparable DSLR. However, there are pros and cons. The smaller body size, I love the look of this unit and the feel of it. And uh, swing on by Larry'sCheapShots.com and you'll see an article about EVFs and then some other stuff uh, coming up next week. Let me nice. talk about the mirrorless. Very mirrors. cool. Hey, can I show you something? Yeah, yeah, let's um, do this. Now, this is something that I was thinking, I was going to add it to the first part of the tip, but then I figured I'd kind of set it up to not waste any time. But remember when I was showing you guys these pictures? I showed you these pictures that were the exact right, the same separates. shots, the exact same shots that were one on top of the other, right? Don't worry about my, don't worry about my email, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, one is the exact same shot, exact same shot, right? What I did was in Photoshop, when you're in Photoshop, you can go into File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And what that does is it lets you take a series of files and put them all into one layer. Mm -hmm. So all I did is I selected all of those files, and that's what it looks like here, right? So they're all the exact same file. Okay. Right? Now, once I have that done, all I did was go to Layer, select all the files, and then convert to smart object, right? So now, all of those files are right here in this file as a smart object. Okay. Right? Once you have them all as a smart object, layer, smart objects, stack mode, and you select mean. Okay. Right? So now it takes the, the stack mode of all of those images that sit in a smart object and averages them out, and this is what you get. Very cool. So if your camera doesn't have right. multiple exposure, just take the same exposure over and over and over, and you can rely on Photoshop to do all of that stuff for you. Okay, and this is this is available in earlier versions of Photoshop as well. Right. So not bad. Very cool. RC, you you. I was thinking about that. I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta talk about that too. So, but anyway, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I got a website I want you to take a look at, as well as some prizes. Stick around. I want to take his class. <laughs> I can't wait to do this again. I wanted to tell you about the RC tutorial because you guys got a brief version of it, but if you're NAP members and, and thousands and thousands of you guys are NAP members, it's you actually did this. He did this on the NAP member website just last week and I think it's just posted it within the past uh, week. And, and, I, it, and it's, it's a tutorial about noise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but, but it's being used by these guys in so many different ways. Scott had an image that he posted on Google Plus that was a tourist shot of a cathedral, and the name escapes me right now, but it, it was gorgeous, 
and there were no tourists in it. And he used the, the, this technique to take multiple pictures of the cathedral with people in different positions as they walked around. And so ultimately he was able to finally get all these different shots mm -hmm. and combine them together to eliminate all the people and just get the room. And, and you're doing the same kind of thing. And that's the thing, it was just like, and so here's, let me just, if you're a NAT member, I'll show you, right? If you're not a NAT member, then you know, you go to members.photoshopuser.com and this is where you would see this stuff. It's actually this one right here, stack mode eliminates noise. I played with the entire stack mode thing uh -huh. because noise was random and I'm like, well, if you use a stack mode on a smart object, it could average out the noise. And truthfully, like I'm sitting there, I'm coming up with a tip and I wanted to show Phyllis this thing and I'm like, but wait a minute, that would be the, the exact same technology would apply to streams of water. You can right. even out the water. So that's where it came from. If you want to see that, you can go ahead and see that over on the Photoshop user site or I can go ahead and put something together quickly so you could see it on G+. You know who that's else did that was Russell Brown did a tutorial once where he took a whole bunch of pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. And he had, you know, the traffic moving all, the, all along and, and then just eliminated all traffic off the Golden Gate. It was a really cool effect. Now, you've got a, a website to watch. A website. Petra Cross. Now, Petra is a phenomenal photographer, right? She, by day, she does Google stuff. Uh -huh. And she works at Google. And by night and off chances, she has she just has a really really nice style about how she's how she does things. She was the person who actually came up with the stop motion video for the Google Plus conference that we did. Very cool. So she's doing a lot of work on the stop motion side of things. And if you take a look at her website, I'll show you. We'll go back to it real quick here. There's uh, right there the Petra in Paris mm -hmm. stop motion. So she's doing this whole video series where she's teaching people how to be able to do that stop motion thing that she does. So she's a great photographer, she's got a great eye, she's got a great sense of style, and on top of all of that stuff, she's showing you guys how to be able to do what she does very, very best. So make sure you take a look at petracross.com. That's the person that we think you should watch this week. That's now, a great one. Contest time. Yeah, we got stuff to give away. Are we giving all this away on this show? Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. okay, so the on one, Perfect Suite, uh, the photo, Perfect Photo Suite 6, and then uh, Rogue Flash Gels. These you don't need, there's a, there's a Rogue Grid that has flash gels in a certain shape, and you don't need the grid, so these will work without. We love On One. We do thank love On One. Thank you so much one. for that. Rogue, thank you so much for this. This sits in my back all the time. Google. We love Colby. Google Plus for photographers. That's right. Great book, great book if, you want to, if you're a photographer and want to learn how to be able to maximize Google Plus. Colby's the guy to teach you to do it. I think he's phenomenal. Lightroom 4, Senor Scott Kelby. You know what, this book is tearing it up and I think that it's one of those things, I can't tell you how many people I run into all the time that turn around and go, well how hard is it to learn Lightroom? Oh like, yeah, there's a lot to it anymore. You can, you can do a lot of stuff inside of Lightroom, but you need step-by-step -step instruction. The best person to be able to do that is Scott Kelby and he does it in this book. Thank you so much, Scott Kelby, and thank you so much, Peach Pit, for most of this. How do you enter? You go to the KelbyTV.com website and you find this episode. This episode is 113 inside of here. You're going to leave us a name. You're going to leave us a comment. Guys, we appreciate the fact that you guys watch on YouTube. You guys watch on Google+. Plus. There's some of you guys that watch this on the live stream when we're doing the taping. But our producer can only go to one spot. That's the only spot that they can randomly go and sell like prizes. Yep. But if you want to win, this is the place for you to do that. Now, I think we're all about out of time. Yep. But next week, we have Scott Kelby. He's going to come in and talk to us about some tips on travel photographers. You get some cheap shots. We got Rick Salmon. Tons of stuff. Stick around. This is Larry Becker. His name is RC. We'll see you soon.